Hello, my name is uh, Christos Theodoropoulos and in this video I'm going to present our work about imposing a relation structure in language model embeddings using contrastive learning. This study was presented at Connell 2021 conference that was co-organized with EMLP conference. My collaborators in this work are James Henderson, Andre Coman, and Marie Francine Moons. Dr. Henderson is affiliated to EDAP Research Institute, Andre Coman to EDAP and EPFL University, and Professor Moons and I are affiliated to KU Leuven University, and more precisely, we work in the LEAR lab. Here we can see the overview of the presentation. First, I will introduce the main research question. Then I will describe the dataset and the proposed framework of this study. Then I will present the evaluation process and the TISNE analysis. Finally, I will discuss our results in the end-to-end -end information extraction task and I will summarize our key contributions. The main research question of this study is the following. Can we impose knowledge structure to a text encoder using the contrastive learning paradigm? It is well known that the pre-trained language models can capture contextualized information effectively. However, their ability to capture high-level information like relations in the text is limited. In this study, we work with biomedical text, and more precisely with the AD dataset. The sentences are annotated with labels for drugs and adverse effects, as well as the relations between them. Let's use an example to describe the data preprocessing. In this sentence, we have two drug entities, the naproxen and toxaproxen, and one adverse effect entity, pseudoporphyria. We extract the encoded public version of this sentence and also the relative knowledge graph to model the relations in the sentence. The nodes are initialized with pre-trained embeddings. If we consider all the tokens, the adjacency matrix is very sparse, as the relations are rare and there are many singleton nodes. Hence, we propose to use only the essential subgraph, and in our example, we have two drug nodes and one adverse effect node. We move on the description of the framework, and as contrastive learning is a key technique of the study, the sampling strategy is very important. We apply hard negative graph sampling by randomly selecting tokens that are not part of an adverse effect entity, keeping the correct drug token and vice versa. The positive and negative graphs have the same number of relations, but not necessarily the same number of nodes. The negative graphs are sampled offline and in each training step, a number of those is used. This is a hyperparameter of the model. In the CLNR model, random sampling is executed at the batch level in a balanced way. Let's return to our example to explain better the graph sampling strategy. On the left, we have the positive subgraph for this particular sentence, and on the right, we have two negative subgraphs. In the first one, we can see that the adverse effect node is correct, but the drug uh, nodes are wrong as we randomly sampled the words cases and report. This is the sampling strategy for the CLGS model. For the CLDR model, we have an intermediate step where we create the disjoint positive subgraphs and then we sample the negative subgraphs. In the CLGS model, we pass the sentence through the character bar model
and then we have a pooling and a projection layer to extract our final sandwich representation. We experiment with different pooling strategies like average and max pooling as we want to apply contrastive learning on the other side. We pass the positive and sampled negative graphs through the GCN layer and we extract the graph representations. Finally, we apply contrastive learning in the graph sentence level and we hypothesize that by applying contrastive learning to the resulting pair of graph and sentence representations, the pooled sentence embeddings are trained to carry the information of the pooled graph embeddings. In the CLDR model, we want to, to decrease the level of abstraction and apply contrastive learning in the relation level. Hence, we pass the sentence through character BERT and create the correct relation representations. On the other side, we pass the positive and negative graphs to create positive and negative relation representations. In this setup, as we work in the relation level, we use disjoint graphs which is an extreme simplification of the subgraph. Finally, we apply contrastive learning in the relation level and we hypothesize that the pairs of sentence token embeddings are trained to carry the information of the related graph node embeddings. In order to solve end-to-end -end information extraction, we need to create a different latent space for the named entities. So, we propose a CLNR model and apply contrastive learning in the token level after, after sampling entities in a balanced way. We train all the models using 10-fold cross-validation technique. The loss function is similar to the same CLR loss. The idea of these losses is to enforce similarity in correct representation pairs and decrease similarity between wrong representation pairs. The first evaluation step for the CLGS model is a simple similarity check. The trained model should be capable to detect the positive graphs of each sentence given all the negative graphs. Indeed, the performance is quite good, especially when average pooling is used, the accuracy is over 91%. The second evaluation step is a linear setting for relation extraction. So, we pass the sentence through the pre-trained medical character bird model, and this is the baseline model, and uh, through the tuned character bird of the CLGS and CLDR models. Then we create all the possible candidate relations and train a dense layer for binary classification. The linear setting directly provides insight into how successfully the relation structure, structure is imposed at the token level of the text encoder. The tuned character bird of the CLGS model performs poorly as the pooling layer smooths out the information, uh, the essential information. In contrast, the tuned character bird of the CLDR model outperforms the baseline model with an improvement of 15% in the F1 score. This is a strong finding that the structure is imposed successfully. In order to further explore the learned representations, we perform a TISNA analysis using the tuned character bird of the CLDR model. We create the latent space of the relations. We can clearly detect well-shaped clusters of the relations. As we learn representations in an asymmetric way, we can't solve the relation extraction and name entity recognition tasks in the same space. That's why we implement a, the CLNR model and learn meaningful representations for the named entities. In the final part of the presentation, we will demonstrate the quality of the learned representations solving uh, the end-to-end -end information extraction task using KN classifiers. So, in the relation embedding space, we predict if we have a relation between two tokens, 
and in the named entity embedding space we predict the entity type and the boundaries of entities and finally we apply strict evaluation by saying that we mean that a relation is considered correct only if its type and the two entities involved in the relation are predicted correctly. Our approach achieves competitive to state-of-the-art results. This illustrates the high quality of the learned uh, representation spaces. Notably, if we, hypothetically speaking, have a perfect name entity recognizer, the upper bound of our approach in the relation extraction task is 86.5%. In summary, we propose a novel contrastive learning framework for effectively imposing relation structure on language model embeddings. In principle, the framework is text encoder and structure agnostic. We experiment with different graph formulations and stress the importance of working the relation and token level. We achieve competitive results in the information extraction task and in addition we release the code of the study for reproducibility and further research exploration. Thank you very much for your attention. Here you can see the QR codes for the code implementation, the official paper, and my personal website. Feel free to leave your comments and the questions below. Thank you again.